Hey, hey guys, Alec Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba. So I'm going to talk about masks. You're saying, what the heck can he say about mask? A mask is a mask is a mask. No, I got news for you. The masks I have seen in 60 years of scuba diving would blow your mind. Some of them were really good. A few were really good. Anyway, today I want to concentrate on some masks. I picked up some special ones from my very big collection. Kevin and I went out and opened up some boxes and dug out some weird old masks, and we came up with this idea that maybe you would enjoy this. First of all, I want to show you this mask because this is a very, very special mask. You're going to have to zoom in here a little bit, uh, Kevin, because you see, this is the Scepter Frogman mask. Now, it's very important, Kevin, that you see the word genuine down there. This is not a cheap copy. This is the genuine Scepter Frogman mask. And right over here, very important if you're going to be buying a mask. You see right here, lets you see underwater. So this mask lets you see underwater. <laughs> anyway, I'm just funny a little bit, but this is a pretty good old mask. Now, I made French Scepter Frogman mask. Let's you see underwater. It's safe, it's durable, it's unbreakable, and it's flexible. All good qualities of a mask. So, let's see what this is all about. What's this mask about? Now, I need to tell you right now, this mask is from the 50s, the early 50s. Open up the box. The box is like new. Pull out the mask. The mask is like new. My goodness gracious, look at that, Kevin. I don't think this mask has ever been used. It's actually got a strap. I will not put it on because I have a monstrous head. And the strap, but there you go. There you go. You can't beat that, Kevin. And remember, this is a genuine frogman mask. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you that. This actually is uh, probably was a pretty popular mask with kids. Uh, I first had a mask when I was about four years old. A mask and a snorkel. And I started horsing around at my uncle's cottage in Lake Ontario, and I had my first scuba diving experience when I was 10, 1958. But I had a mask like this. I soon graduated the better stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a scuba diving course to become a frogman. Frogman. Wasn't frogman on that mask? And uh, it's, uh, the rest is history. As you say. Anyway, I thought I'd enjoy it. you might enjoy seeing that uh, from my collection. But what I wanted to talk about today are super masks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real masks. And uh, the, here, here are four examples in front of me right now. I have a couple I'm going to show you too, but they're very special. But let's look at these four right here. I'm going to show you these four because these four masks that you see in front of you uh, are very, very popular, very common. As a matter of fact, each of these masks, which look to be identical, and they are pretty close actually, look to be identical, are all made by different companies. Yeah, they were very popular, this particular style of mask. It was called, uh, you know, full view, uh, wide angle, wrap around, whatever. So this one, as an example, is from U.S. Divers, big company back in the day, and this particular one is, in fact, called the wrap around. Wrap around, is that right, Kevin? This one? Yeah. Yeah, the wrap around. And you see what, what they mean, very simply, standard mask in a lot of respects, glass, metal frame, strap on the back, goes over your face, but it's the, it's the, Glass, the vision, faceplate in front, and a little window on each side. And the theory was, you see, that if you had this on, you could look to your left and right and see, you could see like 360. Well, nobody can see 360. You're lucky if you manage 200 degrees. And the difficulty with these masks was that they had a post in there on the corners. So the post actually interfered. Very, very difficult to turn your eyes in the mask and look out through the side windows. You could maybe see movement out the side windows. I could tell you a, a really interesting story uh, about a, a big, big barracuda one day that scared the heck out of me. Uh, and I only saw him because I saw him moving through the side window. That's another story for another time. But this is a very, very common mask called the wraparound. Now this particular mask also had a nose pocket, so it was fairly easy to, to uh, equalize. And that was quite an innovation. Yeah, yeah. This mask is from the late 60s, early 70s. Kevin will get exact dates on this from his vast collection of catalogs. And uh, so you can actually reach in there with two hands. You had to use two hands because the reg was in there. Two fingers reach in like that, squeeze your nose to equalize. It also had an optional purge, which was quite popular. At the bottom of the nose, can you see there, Kevin? I don't know if you can see that. Can you see down here? 
a little pocket down there, and that little pocket that hangs down from the tip of your nose has three little bumps on it. And on the inside, I won't take it out, but on the inside, there's a small plastic one-way valve that goes in there, pops down in there. You can take it out and put it back in if you want to. And if you wanted to have a purge on your mask, you would simply take a sharp knife and just cut the tips off of those four little bumps, make four little holes. And for you, those of you who don't know what a purge is, because purges aren't used much anymore, a purge is very simply a way to get rid of the water easily. So if you had water in your mask, you would simply look down like this, you see, exactly the opposite of what we do now to clear a mask. You look down like so, and the water in the mask would collect in that bottom of the nose pocket, and then we'd exhale you know, the mask, and the air pressure would push the water up through that one way down. That was the theory, and it actually worked pretty well. They weren't perfect, because that little rubber purge valve would start to dry and leak, and pretty soon the purge valve was letting water into the mask, not the idea. Now this is the same mask. Virtually identical in many respects. This has a big uh, nut on it. This has a small nut on it and so on. And this particular mask is from uh, Decor. No, this is not from Decor. This is from Sportsways. Sportsways. And this is called the Full View. Wrap around and the Full View. Eh, whatever. It's the same mask. Strap, band, everything else. Even has that same optional purse down in there and nose pocket, the whole thing. Almost exactly the same. Two big companies. Here's another one. Almost exactly the same. Very, very slightly different. Front glass, side glass, strap, all that kind of stuff. Has that same optional purge down in there. Slightly different shape, you know, so this one has a bit of a curve to it. These are both straight, but it's essentially the same mask. This is a brand spanking new mask from Decor. Even has the stickers on there. Caution, do not use this mask underwater. No, that's not what it reads. I can't read it. Type is too small, but it's almost exactly the same. So again, just an indication how popular it was. And you all know uh, Scuba Pro, big, big company, a very well-known, well-respected company, makes top quality gear. They had to get in on the action too. And so they had a wide view. They don't know the name. These two don't have an actual model name. But Scuba Pro had one of these wide-angle masks as well with the three-window. Sometimes they were called that three-window or tri-window masks. They uh, did it a little bit differently. Instead of having that little optional purge, they had a real purge. That's what this thing on the front is. It looks like an adjustment dial, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's, a, it's actually a purge in behind this a plastic cap. There's actually a fairly large one-way valve. And this, was, this was fairly common, too. Made the mask a, a little better. And again, you would lean forward, get the water trapped in the nose, breathe out, and the water would blow out. So there you go. Super mask, wide-angle mask. Now, not any, anybody could, could buy these masks. You had, you, you had to be special to buy these masks, you know. You had to have a big head, first of all, because <laughs> these were made for a big face. I know I've had the divers back then in the 70s, I had divers who tried to put these on and they wobbled on their head. Uh, Kevin and I wouldn't have a problem. We have big heads. But uh, you had to have a pretty big head and, and, and be able to handle a mask. Are they good masks? Uh, you know, as I said earlier, these pokes actually cut out the vision on the sides. And they were so big, they stuck up in your face. I used to say that they looked like a fishbowl on your head. So in actual fact, rather than giving you more vision, in many cases, they reduced the vision. That's right. The new modern masks that are very, very close to your face, very, very close, right? The glasses right up here, close to your face. They actually give you better vision. It's like putting on a pair of glasses. If you wear glasses out in the tip of your nose, way out here, you can't see nearly as well as if the glasses are back. But anyway, uh, they were very popular. I want to show you a couple more. Two more to be exact. Here's one. This is a pretty neat one. I've discussed this on my, uh, on my uh, tech tips. But this particular mask looks to be almost exactly the same. And uh, is there a name on this mask, Kevin? This is made by uh, Swim Master, I think. Max View. There's a good name for a mask. Max View. Okay. Because that uh, obviously emphasizes the fact that supposedly you can see really well. Uh, very similar. Very, very similar. But it has one outstanding feature that makes this mask different from all the rest. Okay. I mentioned that on these masks, the nose pocket allows you to reach up there with your fingers and squeeze your nose, hold it so you can equalize. Right? Bit of a nuisance though because it's a regulator and you got to squeeze it. A bit of a nuisance. This mask... <laughs> you ready for this? This mask has those same nose pockets. You see them in there? I can squeeze it with my fingers. You see that? I can reach in. Can you see that, Kevin? But if you can't get in there, you don't need to bother. You just reach these two wires in front. Squeeze the wires. Can you see that working? 
<laughs> yeah, they put these wires down inside the mask. And those wires go up inside, you squeeze the wires and hold your nose. Yeah, definitely very interesting. And they had the purge and everything else. A similar type of mask. Now, I want to show you just one more. Remember, finished one more. And this is a really special mask. This is my mask. And uh, if there ever was really a mask that deserved to be called Max View, I suppose this is it. Because all these masks had that same common problem. They had that post in the corner. Uh huh. <laughs> what do you think of that? And did we decide who made this one? This is my aqua lung too, but there's no name on this mask, unfortunately. Look at this. Ah, there's a mask. There's a mask. You talk about Mac View. This mask reminds me of my 1956 Buick Special. First car I ever owned. Cost me $250. Yeah, I had to split it with one of my high school friends. I couldn't afford $250 bucks for a car. But they had a windshield like this. The windshield went across the front like this, and right down the side, you could look out. The windshield up the side, just like this mask. Now, there's a real mask view, nothing in the corners. Bit of distortion in there, I can even see it right now. But I used this mask, I don't know how many dives, hundreds and hundreds of scuba dives. I used this mask and loved it. Beautiful mask. I forgot to mention, there's one more thing. Besides, you have to have a big head. You also had to have big lungs. Why? Because these masks hold about a half a gallon of water. <laughs> That's right. I, I found that out the hard way. That if your mask floods, which doesn't happen often, shouldn't, but it does happen occasionally, and you have to clear your mask, very tough to do it on one breath. Yeah, so sometimes you had to, and the mask would be half empty, and keep on going, and eventually you get it all empty because it's so big it holds a lot of water. Anyway, kind of neat. Super mask for super divers. How about that? Divers with Big heads, they might like these. A lot different from modern masks. Next time you're in a dive store, take a look at a modern mask compared to this. Hey, I hope that was interesting for you guys. Alec Pierce from Vintage Scuba, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.